understanding. But I said, and what of the question I asked you? Is it nothing? No, it was never nothing. Never, ever nothing. Bishop Frings taught me that a long time ago. And when I asked him to describe theolog theologically what it was, and I said he first outlined the Catholic understanding, what he says is when, uh, well, in the Catholic understanding, when the Church with its ordered ministry, in obedience to the Lord's command, celebrated the Eucharist, Christ concretized himself anew in the sacrament, the faithful feed on him and are transformed. And by contrast, in a church with, or an ecclesial community with an ordered ministry, acting in obedience to a Lord's command, but a church or ecclesial community which did not have, from a Roman Catholic perspective, valid orders, the nearest Cardinal Ratzinger could get to an explanation was Calvin's understanding of the Eucharist, though I know you Anglicans do not teach this, where the faithful are caught to the heavenly places and there feed on Christ. And is that grace real and transforming, I asked? Of course it is. And I should have responded immediately, same result, different method. But I only thought of that afterwards. <laughs> now I think one of the things that that fascinating exchange for was that when Roman Catholics talk about real and effective spiritual communion, as they've done the doctrine of one bread, one body, and uh, which again caused certain questions uh, uh, and discussions. They are meaning something more ontological than we actually tend to see, certainly as English Anglicans, to hear. I think we tend to think this is really just a sort of meditative thinking about. It. But if we say, well, they're caught to the heavenly places and their feet on Christ, there is something that is real, ontological, and indeed transforming. Now, these conversations perhaps illuminate the context of Dominus Jesus, which with his uh, uh, comment that the non-Roman Catholic churches are not churches in the proper sense cause so much difficulty. If the understanding of the Roman Catholic Church includes as an integral part the Petrine ministry, then that for them constitutes a church in the proper sense. And therefore the ecclesial communities which have not preserved the valid episcopate and the general and genuine and integral substance of the Eucharistic mystery are not churches in the proper sense. But they may be churches these or communities with the marks of the church in a very important and deep sense. Cardinal Casper, commenting quite rightly, it would have been possible to formulate it in a more sensitive way. I'm reminded of Archbishop Robert Runce's comment, you have to remember the Vatican as a village. There are different dicasteries, different communities, and they don't always communicate with each other quite as effectively as they might. So, it might have been possible to formulate it in a more sensitive way. And then he goes on to say, informed people are well aware that the Protestant communities do not want to be church in the same way as the Catholic Church understands itself. Well, that may well be true of some Protestant communities, but the Episcopally ordered churches of the Anglican Communion, and I would suggest also the at least amongst the traditional section of the Scandinavian and Baltic churches, I think we would all claim to have a Catholic understanding. And even, of course, to want to see in what way, in a shrinking world, there can be a universal ministry. 